Okay, I'm out in the garage. I'm going to do a little bit of work. Um, we have this Ninja Ultima blender, and Deb was using it the other day with... Uh, she was making banana bread, so she just had bananas in it. Not a lot of liquid. And we started it up, and it kept popping the GFCI um, outlets in the kitchen. So I brought it out here. I'm going to test it on another circuit just to see if something's going on and uh, see if we can figure out what's going on with it. So here's our blender. We'll start with turning it on. And this one, you have to have something in it uh, in order for it to work. So we'll put, put something in there. All right, it just did it. The lights out, power's out. So, all right, so something's going on for sure. Let's see if their bearings are bad or something like that's happening. Well, as we know, all good repairs start with digging in, seeing what we got. I see at least six screws here. Oh, I take that back. Nine screws. I like to always lay my screws down in the order in which I take them out, sort of in the same layout. That way I know where they go when I go to put them back. This is that keyed screw. We'll see if I can get it to work with this or not. Looks like one of those Torx bits, but be able to get into it with that. Looks like that's all the screws, unless there's some under this foot right here, but we'll see. First thing I'm going to do is start slowly seeing if we can lift this off. It looks like it's going to come off nice and easy. And you can kind of see the cooling blade in there. As this spins, that looks like it's a fan that helps cool the motor down. So that's kind of a neat little design. Here at one direction versus the other. Listen smooth. <coughs> Look at a little noise to it. Who knows, it could have some garbage wrapped around the, the motor or something. Let's take a look up top here. I don't see anything that looks like it's holding it together there, so we'll start working right in this part. And I've got a cover. Probably can't get the cover off because of the other pieces here, but let's give it a try. Looks like it might be in two pieces, so it might separate around that fan. These pieces out of here. And move this out of the way in an effort to get the side piece out. So we're going to be a bit of the... There we go. I move this cord. I should be able to rotate this around and slide it out this other side. Thank you, Chelsea. Let me get that out. I'm just going to put one of these screws back in so this doesn't flop around while I'm working. I think I just found something. A couple of more screws here. This may be holding the top on. Maybe we can get the motor out from the top easier. Question is, what the heck does it hold in place? Aha! see a couple of screws here. It looks like it takes the motor cover off. Over here. Yeah, right here. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like it, subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell notification so you get notified of new videos. Thanks. I'm paying real close attention to where all these wires go because I don't want to get any of them pinched. And I'm sure there's not a lot of extra space in here for routing wires. So. Being kind of cautious here. Looks like this should lift right up out of here. Said about the things you assume, right? All right. And I see these screws I started to undo before were actually to hold this piece in place. Good look here at the, I uh, uh, can't remember what they're called, the brushes or coils? Brushes. Just make sure that they're all good. They might just have a little carbon buildup on them and that could be the only thing wrong with it. Who knows? And yes, I have it unplugged in case anyone's wondering. A little piece of sandpaper. I'm going to clean that coil up in there. I'm really not sure how well they're going to show this, but I've got a little strip of sandpaper. I'm going to push it in there behind the frame. I'm going to use a screwdriver up against it like this so that it's touching the, the coils and I will use that to apply pressure while I just rotate them. I'm going to 
I see if I can push this little tab down here and remove this brush. I feel like it moved for sure. I think I can get a screwdriver here and pull that out a little bit. Looks like this is what's going to hold in that brush, I think. As you know, these things run on essentially a magnet, so you're having to pull it out, but there's going to be a wire on the very bottom of it. So I want to grab that wire and pull as well so we can get the end of this thing just up to where we can clean it a little bit. So get my emery cloth here and it's going to be concave because it's matching the same shape as the uh, uh, as the blade. I'm just going to start by hand and I might just use the screwdriver shaft here. And by the way, I don't know if you can see it. There's a metal tab on the bottom. I don't want to don't want to break that. I'm going to hold it right up against this because it gives me something to sand against and avoid putting any pressure on that wire. But yeah, look at that black carbon coming off of there. All right, that looks like it might be good. We're going to put this guy right in there. And I'm going to lock this in place. I want, that, I want that thing to latch it in there, so I'm going to push that up. There, I heard it snap. All right, I'll do it off camera, but I'm going to do the same to the other side here. All right, I just finished the other side. And listen to that. Hear it? Sounds the same in both directions. So I'm going to pop these screws back on and just put it together enough so that I can give it a test. I may as well just put this thing back on there the right way. All, right, all those in place. You know, it's funny, when I'm doing stuff like this with a pattern on screws, my dad teaching me how to put lug nuts on a <laughs> car tire is what I always think of, like crisscross. Make sure you bring them down nice and even. We seem to do that with everything. So thanks, Pop, for the discipline and approach. Double check and we'll make sure all the wires are going out these little wire channels and that none of them are tight or getting clipped below this. And they are not, so that's good. These would have been so much easier to put on and off with that piece already off of there, you know? Well, before I tighten all these, let me make sure I don't need I just put that in a different order, so I want to make sure this will go on here. All right. And away we go. So if this doesn't do it, I probably won't take it apart any further. Um, I'll just go ahead and get a new one. But so I enjoy trying to fix things at times. You know, this blender would probably cost us another 200 bucks or whatever this high powered, you know, blender would cost. So may as well try it. You know, if it works, great. If it doesn't, well, so be it. You gotta buy a new one anyway. It's funny, we've become just a, a society that throws everything away. Like most things are disposable now. You can always remember attempting to fix something when it broke. Not to mention it's fun to take something apart and see how it works, you know? Four, six, eight, and then we have our one funky screw. I'll do left because I'm going to try and use a regular screwdriver to put it in versus a Torx bit. And again, I am going to be crisscrossing where I tighten these because I want to make sure it's seated in here right. Last one, we'll put this little 
Torx bit in here and we'll see if I can put it in with a regular screwdriver like I took it out. If not, I'll go dig up the one out of the toolbox, but hopefully we can do it. There you go. Now it's time to flip her over and give it a test. Put it on. We'll put our object in here and we'll pulse. It's looking pretty good. By golly, I think we've actually fixed it. Now, I'm going to go in and get a pitcher, and I'm going to actually test it out a little better. This, With this cup on here, it can only do this pulse mode. You can't actually just turn it on and then use the uh, speed control to change the, the speed. So uh, it's really just for pulse and making smoothies. So I'm going to go get a regular... Uh, blender, put some ice and water in it, and just blend it up, see how it does. All right, I went ahead and just got a, uh, um, a blender and put some ice cubes and water and a little bit of iced tea mix in it. So we'll see, I'll start it on its slowest setting, see how it goes. Turn it on, start it, turn it low. Back down Seems to be doing good. I'll do it one more time at a little higher speed for a minute. I'm going to call it good. Deb will be thrilled. We've got our blender back. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this week's video. I know it's a little different, but listen, you do what you got to do, right? A storm's coming, you work on the boat. Ready to cook something on the grill? You cook it on the grill. The blender breaks? You repair the blender, right? Anyway, thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye now.